this is Judy Marino at the CMCC Library. We're going to search for articles for our Miss Duffy psychology class. You should have the assignment by now, and you know that you need recent scholarly journal articles from the psychology database on a topic of your choice. So we'll start from the library's main page, and we'll find the link to ProQuest right here. When at home, you'll be asked for your CMCC student ID number to get into the databases. And ProQuest has thrown us into this basic search screen, which is fine. Uh, to find the psychology databases, you're actually going to scroll down here through these clumpings. And there's a link to the psychology database here underneath the social sciences clump. Also, if you landed on the advanced search screen, it's not so obvious how to get to the databases. The link's right here on this gray bar. And then we don't want to search all these databases at once, so we'll unselect them. And the psych database is closer to the bottom. And just click the link to the database. So, so first let's limit our search to just full text. If this wasn't already selected here, you'll select full text because you want just the articles that have the entire text with it, not a summary or an abstract and no article. That's not going to be helpful. Um, you also want to make sure that you have scholarly journals selected because that's what this assignment is about. You're learning about scholarly articles. The next thing that you should do is update your dates. We're going to want articles within the last five years. So we'll pick after this date and we'll pick January 1st of 2012. Now we can start putting our search terms in. I'm interested in bipolar disorder. So we'll type that in here. And notice that the default search here is anywhere except full text. That means that this database is going to look for these terms, but not within the full text of the article. See what happens when we pick that. So we have 1,800 results. And you'll notice that ProQuest dumped us back into the basic search screen, which is fine, but I like the ad advanced search screen, so we'll select that again because we have more options here. And if we choose to search anywhere, ProQuest will also search the full text of all the articles, which is a ginormous search, and as you can see, it almost retrieved way too many results than what we need. So we don't want to do that for this particular instance. We'll go back and search. We'll search anywhere except full text. And we're back to our 1800 results, which is still a lot. Another thing you can do, instead of searching bipolar disorder as a keyword search, which is what we're doing here by default, you could pick subject heading. As you see, subject searches are much more exacting and will give you less but more relevant results than a keyword search. So another thing you can do is take any two words that work well together and put quotation marks around them. That will make the database search these words as a phrase. We'll try that here. And it was 1,600 results, which was less than a regular keyword search, but a little bit more than a subject search. So I'm interested in the correlation between alcohol abuse and bipolar disordered individuals. So I'm going to add another term to my search. I'll add alcohol.
And now we have a nice set of results to work through. And if you scroll down, you'll notice that all the different ways that we can notice all the ways we can refine the results are on the left. We could change the display to see the most recent results first. I don't want to do that. I actually prefer to have the most relevant results at the top. You could see which of these scholarly articles are also peer reviewed. We could look at what journal titles the articles are published in. So if you scroll around, you'll see oh, there's a result here for a journal called The Lancet. You want to be wary of anything published in The Lancet and actually um, don't use them for this assignment. It's not an appropriate journal to use. We'll talk about that later. So we're going to exclude that from these results. There were three articles. We'll get rid of those. We can look at document type. And for this assignment, you definitely want to exclude any reviews, commentary, editorials, and news. We don't want uh, people's opinions. Uh, you're looking for studies and case studies. So we'll get rid of those. Another thing you can do, if you look at this subject limiter down here, if we open this up, oftentimes this is a good place to get ideas for your research. So now we have a nice bunch of articles to pick from. So we can pick what we want, probably starting from the most relevant at the top. Click on the title of the article to open it up. So some of the articles are in HTML format, some are in uh, PDF format. It's just the difference between having a web page format and something that looks like this, which is what your article might look like if it were to appear in a print publication. Um, this abstract details page is important. Um, there's a lot of information here that you'll need to create your citation. You can always find what I like to call a citation cheat in each database, and ProQuest has an option where it will generate a citation for you. But beware, these citations are often formatted the wrong way. So I actually wouldn't use them. So on this abstract details page, um, the things that you're going to pick up are the title of the article, the authors of the article, the title of the publication, um, which is the title of the journal, the volume, the issue number, the pages, the publication year and date, uh, the DOI, which is a digital object identifier. It's just basically an electronic address for the article maybe the ProQuest document ID, um, certainly the document URL, and perhaps the name of the database that it came out of. This document URL is important. Um, this is the one that will get you back to this article within this database. Don't ever use um, this URL up here in your browser bar. Um, it won't work for you. And then you have options over here for printing, emailing, and saving your results. So that was about all I had to show you. Um, if you have any questions, please come see me in the library. Um, I'd love to talk to you. Thanks, and have a great day.